Welcome to Whips in the Dungeon. I'm Dex and this channel focuses on different classes and types of whips uh, that we throw in the dungeon. But before we get started, let me encourage you to, um, if you enjoy the channel, look for ways of supporting the channel. That might be subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, leaving an appropriate comment. Uh, I did a little work on creating some merchandise for the channel to help support it. So if you're a coffee drinker, you might consider uh, getting a, a Whips in the Dungeon coffee cup. The opposite side of that coffee cup uh, has a 32 plat bull whip formed in the shape of a D. Some of you are gonna say, well, that stands for Dex. And I'm gonna say it could, but it could stand for dominant as well. So um, we also have t-shirts that just, you know, have the channel uh, name and a little YouTube icon. So if you're struggling for what to wear in the dungeon, you might consider uh, wearing a black Whips in the Dungeon t-shirt. So today's episode, we're gonna try to answer the question that was asked by a viewer which plat count is better for a single tail? And I'm gonna give you my cut on that. And in, in having that discussion, we're gonna look at an eight plat count whip compared to a 12 plat count whip, compared to a 16 plat, and then finally a 32 plat. Now, when we generally are talking about plats, I consider any plat counted whip that's built the 16 plat count or less to be a working class whip. You might find that whip on a farm or a ranch or uh, in a circus or a vaudeville show, uh, maybe even on a movie set. Uh, when we move into higher plat count whips, higher than 16 plat, say 20, 24, 32, 64, sometimes uh, even higher plat counts than that, uh, we're looking at collector's grade whips. So we've got one collector's grade whip, the 32 plat count whip that we're gonna look at today. Now, uh, one of these is a signal whip. We've got a snake whip, two bull whips. Uh, all of those classes of whips are appropriate for throwing in the dungeon. And I'm my own cameraman today, so I'm gonna come up real close so I can get behind the screen and view the view what you're seeing so you can get a good look at what these plat counts look like. So we're gonna try to get a real good close up here. You can see the eight plat count, the strands are actually quite wide. And if I had an inch measuring down from the heel knot in that first inch, if I counted the strands around the circumference of that whip, that signal whip, there would be eight strands. That's why it's called an eight plat count whip. When we move over to the 12 plat, you can see the strands are, uh, are narrower, but they're still pretty sturdy, pretty substantial. And if we can do this, I wanna get these side by side so you can compare a 12 plat with a 16 plat there is very little difference. The 16 plat's a little bit thinner than the 12 plat. And then when we come into the collector's grade whip, the 32 plat count whip, you can see those strands are very fine and very attenuated compared to the working class whips. So, we like analogy. So using another analogy, uh, if we went back to middle age times and we were looking at armor that warriors might wear, the early types of armor were plate armor. And you might have a plate that covered the shoulder or another plate that covered the bicep, another plate for the forearm. And that would allow you some movement as a warrior, but it wouldn't be very attenuated or it wouldn't be very articulated. You would have some limited range of motion. I'm going to compare plate armor kind of to the eight plat count whip. Uh, certainly, it's appropriate to throw in the dungeon. You can see with my target, I'm able to throw it on a nice horizontal plane and keep it, keep it on target. And as I move in, I'm actually able to get movement with my streamers consistently. So it's certainly appropriate, but it's going to kind of be like 
comparable to the plate armor uh, in the Middle Age times. And actually, uh, when you get to higher plaque count whips that have one or two, sometimes even three bellies, one of those bellies will be uh, an eight plat belly. So it would, if you're looking at the inside of a 12 or 16 plat count whip, that's a pretty good example of the way one of those bellies would look. And then there would be a, a, a bolster and then say a 12 or 16 plat overlay over that. So let's set that one aside and let's look at the 12 plat count snake Okay, 12 plat. I'm going to compare that, going back to my armor analogy, to when armor advanced and you had scale armor. And the size of the scales, or the scales down the arm, allowed the warrior more range of motion, more fluidity of movement, and, uh, and, and just more ease in the battlefield. Well, the same is going to be true of moving up to a 12 plat count, uh, whether it's a snake or a bull whip. That whip, because it's going to have more attenuation, uh, the strands are thinner than the 8 plat, uh, is going to be more articulated and have more fluidity and movement as it rolls out. But you can see I'm easily able to keep both the forehand and the backhand on target. So there's nothing wrong with a 12 plat count whip to be thrown in the dungeon. In fact, this snake whip, I throw it almost every set that I throw in the dungeon uh, for, for my snake. When we move to the bull whip, the one I showed you, I showed you because uh, it was whiskey and saddle tan and I thought in the video you could see the stranding better it's a four and a half foot bull whip, and I don't want you to see a comparison of a four and a half with a four foot. So I'm actually going to switch this whip and introduce a four foot 16 plat bull whip thrown against a four foot 32 plat bull whip. So you can see a direct comparison of the same length of bull whip. Now, the 16 plat is going to have a little bit better articulation. Then a 12 plat, not significantly, but some. You can see it, the rollout's nice. It's easily, I'm easily able to keep it on both of, both of my targets. If you imagine those be the shoulders or the butt of someone you're playing with. So, I can do a control puff with this. I can keep it on target. Absolutely nothing wrong with a 16 plat whip being thrown in the dungeon. Is the 32 plat count whip significantly better than a 16 plat count whip? For example, most 16 plat count whips, I'm paying 75, $65 to $75 a platted foot. So you can do the math. That times four would be about the cost of that whip. 32 plat count whip collector's grade whip, uh, you're going to pay substantially more. You might be paying anywhere between $125 and $175 a platted foot for a collector's grade whip, depending upon the whip maker. So we're going to throw it. In theory, it has better articulation than a 16 plat count whip. It would be like having scale armor that's very finely scaled and very finely crafted by a master craftsman to give you maximum articulation. But the attenuation of this whip, because the strands are much, much thinner, it's gonna be more fragile, could be more prone to break. I'm gonna kind of compare the collector's grade whip to like a Ferrari. If you have an engine part go on the Ferrari, then that Ferrari might be sitting in the garage waiting for parts or even waiting for a mechanic that's skilled enough to repair it where the 16 plat working Ford, uh, if it breaks, is gonna be more easy to repair, but because it's got the thicker stranding, 
thicker cladding is going to be more durable in the dungeon and not as prone to breakage. It can stand, withstand the force of being cracked over and over and over and over. This whip was crafted in 20,000. I've thrown this whip for over 20 years. It probably will never have a major issue with it, 16 flat whip. So Dex's short and long on this is if you're a beginning whip thrower, start with a 12 or 16 plat whip. If you're an intermediate and advanced thrower and you've been throwing 16 plat and you found a whip maker that you like and uh, you're able to keep your whip on target in the dungeon and do with it what you want to do, then why would you pay a third to double more per platted foot just so you can say you have a collector's grade whip? I guarantee you in a dim lit dungeon, you're not going to know that that's a 32 plat whip. Okay. Now I'm retired Navy and I decided I wanted a Navy commemorative whip and I had a little bit of money in retirement. So I have a couple of collector's grade whips, but I don't throw them regularly in the dungeon. There's too much invested in them. They're too fragile. I'm not going to be, I, I might throw them at a show, but I'm not going to take them in a dim lit dungeon where I can't see uh, maybe an obstacle or what's going on. I'm, I throw my 16 plat count whip, whips, and, which is the majority of my collection. Um, every time, every dungeon set for 21 years, I've thrown this whip, uh, along with some other 16 plat count whips. So I just, I'm, maybe I'm a cheapskate, I just don't see spending that kind of money for a collector's grade whip. So my cut on dungeon play is 12, 16 plat. Uh, find a whip maker that you like, that works with your style of throwing and have fun in the dungeon. And I hope this was informative. I hope at least now you're, you're knowledgeable about the difference in eight 12, 16, and higher plat counts. And theoretically, what that means is better articulation in a finely made whip. Uh, from the thrower's end, of a, a thrower that's been throwing for 20 years, I don't see the, the difference between 16 and higher plat counts as far as justifying spending that huge extra amount of money uh, but if you have it to spend, I'm not going to say not. So they're all great dungeon whips. The short of it is go with a 12 or 16 plat and have fun in the dungeon. And as always, thank you for watching Whips in the Dungeon.